An accidental discovery turned into an unexpected success when a team of interdisciplinary Boston University poor researchers created a new and improved COVID vaccine. It all started in the lab. Researchers were creating and testing different types of RNA strands of ribonucleic acid built from chains of chemical compounds called nucleotides that help carry out genetic instructions in cells. They were determined to see if RNA sequences crafted with small changes to their nucleotides can still work. After running dozens of experiments, they hit a dead end. At first, it was a failure. Decades of research have uncovered the mysteries of RNA in living cells. Without it, our cells couldn't perform fundamental tasks like constructing other cells, carrying amino acids from one part of the cell to the other, or mounting immune responses to viruses. But more recently, scientists have figured out how to harness RNA to make treatments aimed at fighting genetic diseases and cancer. Researchers also learned how to use messenger RNA mRNA to make COVID-19 vaccines. The experiments that researchers perform are aimed at using RNA to deliver life-saving drugs and create more effective vaccines than we have today. Researchers decided to focus on modifying the chemical structure of a lesser known type of RNA called self-amplifying RNA sa RNA, which is manufactured in the lab and replicates itself multiple times in a cell to produce a higher number of the proteins it's programmed to make. The new method worked. Their modified sa RNA was replicating itself in a petri dish. The results kicked off a year-long research project that moved from Greenstaff's chemistry lab to Wong's genetics engineering lab to Boo's National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories Needle, where they tested their modified SARS RNA as a vaccine against the COVID-19 virus. They found that a lower dose of the new vaccine in mice protected them from the disease, just as well as current mRNA vaccines. Their findings are published in Nature Biotechnology. It will be years of further testing before this vaccine can be approved for humans. Even though there is one type of SAR RNA vaccine approved last year for use in Japan, the researchers hope the modified version will make the technology more appealing to drug manufacturers, as well as overcome the challenges of using SAR RNA as a vaccine. The challenge with regular self-amplifying RNA is that there are two competing processes the RNA is trying to make more and more protein, and at the same time, the immune system is degrading it. Standard mRNA COVID vaccines tell cells to produce a spike protein that mimics the real virus. That in turn causes the immune system to kick in and fight the virus. But NSA RNA vaccine goes one step further by repeating those instructions to the cell over and over, making more of the machinery to create the spike proteins. More proteins means you don't need as high a dose, and the immune system remembers how to fight the virus over a longer period of time. Another challenge is that SAR RNA could create a much too strong reaction that can lead to uncomfortable side effects worse than those of current COVID vaccines, which typically cause some people to develop a mild fever or aches. Researchers performed a study called a viral challenge to evaluate if a COVID 19 vaccine built with the modified SAR RNA technology could protect mice more effectively against severe COVID-19 disease than earlier SAR RNA and mRNA vaccines. The viral challenge aspect was particularly important. It exposed how a very low dose of this novel SAR RNA technology is able to protect mice against lethal disease much more effectively than traditional SAR RNA and mRNA COVID-19 vaccines at a similar dose. The new vaccine which incorporates modified nucleotides called M5C5 methylcytidine, also triggered very low levels of inflammation upon vaccination comparable to mRNA vaccines. There is still plenty of work to be done to unveil all of the advantages of this technology over other existing RNA vaccine approaches. But this is a promising start. The next question is whether their modified SAR RNA can provide longer lasting protection against virus infection compared to existing RNA-based vaccines at a similar dosage. Besides COVID vaccines, 
the team's well-tolerated sow RNA could open the door for other types of treatments and gene therapy. At the end of the day, this is a protein-producing system, a gene delivery system. For a genetic disorder, SANA could be programmed to produce a missing gene or replace a defective one. For treating lung, breast, and other cancers, we can have it produce an anti-cancer drug for a disease that requires a high dose and a lot of protein being made. That's why scientists are really excited about our cells amplifying RNA technology because they think they can lower the dose that's needed to enable some of these therapeutic applications. That's how they envision it. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed our videos, subscribe to our channel for there's more to come.